boys and girls, it's Miss Jillian. Today I'm going to read a story to you called Wingari's Trees of Peace. And this is Wingari Matai. Wingari's Trees of Peace is a true story from Africa. Right? Now, Wingari lived on this continent. Africa that we've been studying and she lived in a country called Kenya and Kenya is over here in Eastern Africa, right? So Kenya is the country but Africa is the continent that we've been studying. So this story not only is about Africa but it's also about seeds and planting which we're going to be doing a lot more study of soon. So I thought today you might like to hear a story, and it's a true story about a special woman, Wangari Matai, and March is Women's History Month, so I thought this would be a great book to read and learn more about her. All right, so to kind of get in the mood for our book, I thought maybe we could put on some Kenya music, so I'm going to start. Turn my computer around. Oh, I forgot to show you my African beads that I got when I went to Africa. All right, let's see. Can you see? Wingari. Here she is. Wingari's Trees of Peace. A True Story from Africa by Jeanette Winter. The earth was naked. For me, the mission was to try to cover it with green. And that's a quote from Mungari Matai. Wangari lives under an umbrella of green trees in the shadow of Mount Kenya in Africa. Okay, this is Wangari as a little girl. And this is her village. She watches the birds in the forest where she and her mother are going to gather firewood for cooking. They cook over open fires so they needed wood to burn. And she helps harvest the sweet potatoes, sugarcane and maize from the rich soil. Maize is kind of like a type of corn. It's similar to corn that we would eat here in America. They grew all of their own vegetables and fruits for eating. Wangari shines in school and when she grows tall, like the trees in the forest, she wins a scholarship to study in America. Look, see, she's taking a ship across the ocean. I bet you know which ocean to a big city and oh look I see the Statue of Liberty oh you might know what city that is hmm. Wangari went to America to study biology that's a science about living things six years later her studies over Wangari returns to her Kenya home and she sees a change what has happened she wonders where are the trees do you see they've been cut down there's no more trees by her village. Wangari sees women bent from hauling firewood miles and miles from home. She sees barren land where no crops grow. And where are the birds? Right? So when the trees near their village got cut down and no more were growing, the women had to walk farther and farther to go get more firewood and carry it a long way. No wonder they were bent over. In the barren land with no crops, that means that no vegetables and fruits were growing. Oh, there's nothing for people to eat, or for the birds either. Thousands of trees have been cut down to make room for buildings, but no one planted new trees to take their place. Will all of Kenya become a desert? She wonders as her tears fall. Wangari thinks about the barren land. I can begin to replace some of the lost trees here in my own backyard, one tree at a time. So she starts by planting nine seedlings. Can you count with me? 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Just nine seedlings. <gasps> Watching the seedlings take root gives Wangari the idea to plant more, to start a farm for baby trees, a nursery. So in an open space, she plants row after row of tiny trees. See, they're just little seedlings but soon they'll grow tall. Next, Wangari convinces the village woman that planting trees is a good thing, and she gives each one of them a seedling. Our lives will be better when we have trees again. You'll see, we are planting the seeds of hope. Here are all the village women, and she's giving each of them a seedling to plant their own trees. The women spread out over their village, planting tiny trees in long rows. Like a green belt stretching over the land. And that's why Wangari Mataya's movement to plant more trees was called the Green Belt Movement. It was a revolution of planting trees. Well, the government men laugh and say, women can't do this. It takes trained foresters to plant trees, but the women ignore the laughter and they keep planting. Wangari pays them a small amount of money for each seedling, still living after three months, their first earnings ever. Right? So she pays them to take good care of their trees. Right? Word travels like wind rustling through leaves about the green returning to Wangari's village. Right? Do you see all the women planting and planting and planting? And soon other women in other villages and towns and cities in Kenya are planting long rows of seedlings too. See? Wangari started it, but all the other women started helping her too. Oh, but the cutting continues. He's using an axe to cut down trees and build more buildings. Wangari stands tall as an oak to protect the old trees that are still remaining. We need a park more than we need a new office tower. All right, so she stood up against them. And those government men, they disagree. Wangari blocks their way, so they hit her with clubs. They call her a troublemaker, and they put her in jail. <sighs> and still, she stands tall, because right is right, even if you're alone. But she wasn't alone, boys and girls, was she? She had all those people. But Wangari is not alone. Talk of the trees spreads all over Africa like ripples in Lake Victoria. See, the women are still planting. And more women hear the talk and they plant even more seedlings in longer and longer rows. And the seedlings take root and they grow tall until there are over 30 million trees where there were none. Did you hear that, boys and girls? 30 million trees. Wow, that's a lot of trees planted. And those trees grew up, right? And the umbrella of green in Kenya returns. The women walk tall. Their backs are straight. For now, they can gather firewood closer to home. Right? They don't have to walk anymore to long distances to get firewood because they've got trees right near their village. And look what else has returned. The birds, the animals, right? The land is happy again. The land is no longer barren. Sweet potatoes, sugar cane, and maize grow again in the rich red earth, right? See, here's the maize, like our corn. And here are the birds just waiting to eat that corn. The whole world hears of Wangari's trees 
and of her army of women who planted them. Right? See, there's Africa. And there's Wangari. And if you were to climb to the very top of Mount Kenya today, you would see the millions of trees growing below you and the green that Wangari brought back to Africa. Right? So she helped start a movement that spread all over the continent. And here's the author's note if you'd like to learn more. Wangari Matai was born in 1940 in Ilis, a small village in the verdant, fertile land of Kenya. Brilliant in school, Wangari was awarded a Kennedy Scholarship to attend college in America, where she earned both a bachelor's and a master's degree in the biological sciences. Wangari returned to Kenya to attend the University of Nairobi. That's the capital of Kenya. And she became the first woman from East Africa to earn a PhD, right? That's a doctorate. That means she was really smart about biological sciences. She taught at the university, and today, or before she passed away, she was a member of parliament in Kenya. Wangari started the Green Belt Movement Kenya in 1977 on World Environment Day by planting nine seedlings in her backyard. That's Earth Day. She was responding to the growing deforestation of her homeland. She saw many changes in daily life, especially among rural women. Some of these changes were lack of firewood, poor soil, erosion, and a lack of clean drinking water. The desert was creeping closer, encroaching on the fields where crops and trees once flourished. She enlisted local women to help her plant more indigenous trees, and by 2004, 30 million trees had been planted. 6,000 nurseries existed in Kenya. The income of 80,000 people had been increased. That means it got more so. And the movement had spread to 30 African countries and beyond. Wangari Maathai was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 2004 because of her contribution to world peace through the Green Belt Movement. And in African tradition, a tree is a symbol of peace. So it was fitting that when notified of winning the award, one of Wangari's first acts was to plant a Nandi flame tree at the base of Mount Kenya. And in her Nobel Peace Prize acceptance speech, she said, we are called to assist the earth to heal her wounds and in the process heal our own. Indeed, to embrace the whole creation and all its diversity, beauty, and wonder. That's the story of Wangari's Trees of Peace. Well, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed Wangari's Trees of Peace. Right? <sighs> now, I hope that you can go outside and look for some seeds and look up at the trees and think about what seeds of hope that you can plant in our world today. I'm missing you guys a lot. Hoping you're getting outside and getting some fresh air and taking big deep breaths. Alright, miss you. See you soon. <laughs>